<laughs> I just think that if technology, to, to go back to it, and we'll come back to the questions, mm -hmm. if technology continues to advance in the direction that it's going, it seems to me that one of the things that's happening is the distance and the the distance between us and information is getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. Our access to information is getting greater and greater. And that as this time goes on, it's going to be more integrated into who you are as a person, whether it's through Elon's creation or someone else's creation. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, I could envision a language that's being used through which we can communicate with each other that Elon was discussing when he said you're going to be able to, t to communicate without using words. That once that happens, you're going to be able, whether it's 100 years from now or 1,000 years from now, whatever it is, you're going to be able to to display or to communicate with pure intent. You're going to be able to do things without I get it. Our our ability to use personality and charisma and language and to be more articulate and impressive in the way you talk to have a a different impact on the way a person receives your thoughts. Instead, it'll be purely your intent and your thought Purely your thought process. Allow me to ask, suppose that is possible, why would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to be living in a tree throwing poop at the other chimps? Those are the good old days. <laughs> the good old days when we were in the trees and we didn't have fire. We had to like catch our rats and eat them alive. In fact, we got very good at throwing things, yes. even if it started with poop. We yes. were the best throwers of any species there ever. ever was, ever. And they think that might have contributed to us becoming ever. what we are. Ever. Right? So I'm... Just because we can extrapolate to a thing doesn't mean that's the thing that's going to happen. True. So I remember, I'm old enough to remember the 1950s and 60s. People were imagining the future, the home of the future. Well, technology was automating things. So everything was a button. So the home of the future was just a button. And then people imagine that the future evolution of humans, we'd grow a big index finger because you have to be pushing buttons all the time. Right. And now, no, we don't have buttons all over the house. Not really, okay? That's not the thing. Well, we have the remote control. I guess that's buttons, but the button can do a thousand different things, right? right. Depending on how it's programmed. So there, there are things that, uh, uh, take a look at computing. We, you know, there was an era where the more, the bigger a computer was, the more powerful it was, okay? Let's go right up to 1968, 2001, A Space Odyssey. This is imagining a world in 2001. Oh, computers will be really big then. There's that <laughs> one big computer in the center of the ship. Oh, no one imagined that you'd have something more powerful than that on your hip. Yeah. That that was no one thought that way. People more on imagining your wrist. People imagine uh, the future where we have motorized sidewalks and monorails and everything. And they, what we didn't get was we thought energy would cost nothing. So we imagined a world with transportation, motion, and actions that all require energy to enable. And those worlds came out of the heads of people who extrapolated forward. And they did not understand that the real action was in information. Information is what became cheap, not energy. Mm. And when, you, when information becomes cheap, I have the world at my fingertips, even though I still have to walk down the sidewalk and it's not a motorized pathway. Yeah, that's the thing they never saw coming they in never, any of those. Didn't see it coming. They didn't see the internet coming. Information would be cheap. Right. And so I, I'm not one to just take what's going on now and extrapolate it and say everyone is going to be living that differently. Because other things come in from the side right. that you don't anticipate. They're, and when they come in from the side, it is not an extrapolation of what you're doing now. It is something you didn't even imagine. Because an innovative, creative person looks to the left, looks to the right, and says, I can combine these into something that's completely new mm. that no one even imagined. So that's how the future unfolds. So extrapolating, you get the first couple of years correct? Five years, 10 years out, you are completely off. And you said 500 years, 1,000 years. Let's shorten that a little bit. Mm. Let's say 30 years. You say, no, that's not much. You know, we need more time than that. Ask yourself. Let's go back to 1960. We didn't have a spaceship. United States did not have a, a, a rocket 
to carry people that wouldn't blow up on the launch pad. Okay? We weren't there yet. Mm. 30 years later, it's 1990, people have laptop computers, and we've been to the moon six times over. 30 years. So, when I think today to 30 years from now, I'm saying I don't know that I can predict anything, but there's some things that I know are gonna happen in the next few years, self-driving cars, it's gonna take over like that. Why? Because you replace your car every, half the people replace the car every five years. So in five years, if I have a self-driving car and all the HOV lanes are now reserved only for self-driving cars, that's the next car you're gonna drive. Do you drive one? Do you drive a, a Tesla? I have a Tesla, I have a Tesla. Do you ever do the self-driving thing? Never. It's awesome. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I'm not it ready. scares me, but I'm not, I, I'm not I ready that for that little it. button. Doo -doo, yeah, I'm not ready for it. And that's equipped. I, I even paid a couple of dollars, you know, me the too. extra dollars to get yeah, that. No, I'm, not, I I, that I'm not ready for it yet. But don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, do you use it? Sometimes, yeah. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that. Most of the time, I don't, though, honestly. But I'm ready culturally for it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it'll save thirty thousand lives a year. All right. So this is, and no one's going to drive home drunk. And a self-driving car, when it changes lanes, it tells the other self-driving cars, I'm going to change lane. It parts wow. the traffic for it, and it op then opens into a lane. Mm. Okay? This is the kind, and it can go 90 miles an hour, separated by five feet in front and back of the car. Let's not do that. that no, seems... be because you're thinking of your own reflexes and not that. I'm of... thinking of things going wrong. Every now and then you see one like that hits like a tire iron that's in the middle of the road. That could happen. However, uh, another car would have seen it. I'm in my Tesla, I come up to a road, the Tesla tells me on the screen, changing uh, suspension because of a bumpy road ahead. I say, how's it know it's a bumpy road ahead? It gets the, there's a clearinghouse of this information. Some other Tesla went on that road and figured that out. Mm. My Tesla went on that road before it and figured it out, okay? So the shared information becomes hugely valuable. And yeah, you might have the tire iron in the road and so 5,000 people a year die rather than 35,000 people. We got to wrap our heads around that one this time around. My analogy to this is we used horses for thousands of years. Yeah. Now you go from 1910 to 1930. 1930, you can't give away a horse. Not in urban areas, no. Isn't that crazy? Within 20 years, we went from horses and an entire industry that supported the horses, the buggy whips, the carriages, the, the stables, the food, the blacksmiths, all, an entire industry. Vanishes. Vanishes within two decades, basically within two decades.